Hi guys, Big Z here from Yes2Chat. My today's video will be a little bit different than my previous couple of videos. In today's video, I'll be fixing my leaking toilet. A leaking toilet is quite a common thing in almost every household. But not everyone knows how to fix it. And not everyone knows how easy it actually is to fix it. Of course, you can just call a plumber and get your toilet fixed for maybe 250 or 300 Australian dollars. But why wouldn't you do it yourself? Why wouldn't you save yourself 150 or maybe 200 dollars when it's this easy when you know how to do it? And that's why I created this video to show you how to fix your leaking toilet. All you need to do is to follow these simple steps I am just about to show you. Step number one, determine what style of toilet you have and who is the manufacturer of your toilet. My toilet brand is Imperial and the style of the toilet, it's not actually a closed suite. My toilet has got a cistern which is bolted to the wall instead of sitting on the toilet pan. Step number two, contact a manufacturer or a specialized store for help. You can send them pictures or even a video of your problem and they should be able to tell you what you need to do and which parts you need to buy. I did exactly the same with my problem and they were able to recommend me replacement parts and also give me some helpful tips while doing the repair myself. Parts I was recommended to replace for my issue, for my leaking toilet, were the top push button, which is broken, flash valve and also the inlet valve, because the inlet valve usually has got the same lifespan as the flush valve. The flush valve for my toilet is no longer manufactured, but I was recommended another replacement part, which is more modern and more efficient replacement for the old model. My new flush valve comes in a kit with the replacement foam washer and the top push button. It all cost me only 65 Australian dollars. The second part I was recommended to replace is the Gabarit inlet valve. Cost me only 25 Australian dollars. Altogether, including delivery, I paid 90 Australian dollars. Step number three. Once you have your parts delivered, you will also need to get a couple of tools. For my toilet, I'll need a Phillips screwdriver and also a wrench large enough to tie up this nut on the flush valve. And that's all we needed to know before we get started with the toilet repair. So let's get into it. Okay, so let's start with the fixing of the toilet. Before we can get started, we will have to turn off the water supply to the toilet. At the back of the toilet there is a tap. You just close off the tap. And now you can unscrew the hose coming out of the tap. Now we can unscrew the top push button. And remove the top lid from the cistern. And this is the inside of our cistern. Here we can see our flush valve and also the inlet valve. We will be replacing both of them. 
as I mentioned before, my toilet is actually fixed to the wall with a couple of screws which I will have to remove to be able to remove the cistern from the toilet pan. I am going to use the Phillips screwdriver to undo these two screws. Once we have our two screws removed, we look at the bottom of the cistern for these wing nuts which we will have to remove as well. We have to do this on both sides of the cistern. And now we can remove the cistern from the toilet pan. Just be careful there is still some water left in the cistern. Once you empty the water from the toilet cistern, place it on a towel and give the toilet pan a quick wipe to have it ready for the replacement foam washer which will go on top of the toilet pan between the toilet pan and the cistern. So here is our emptied cistern with the flush valve and also the inlet valve. We will remove them now and then we'll give the cistern a quick wipe and install our replacement parts. To be able to remove the inlet and flush valve we need to turn the cistern around, remove the foam washer and with the wrench unscrew these two nuts. Now we can turn the cistern back and remove the inlet valve and also the flush valve. The next step will be cleaning off the inside of the cistern. As you can see it's already getting dark outside but it's not going to stop us from continuing the fixing of the toilet. Now it's the right time to have a closer look on our replacement parts. So let's start with the flash valve. It's got few adjustments you can do before you install this flash valve into the cistern. First thing I would mention is that this is actually two-way flash valve meaning that it's designed for two-way button with half flash and full flash. Same here, one button is for half flash, second button is for full flash. Second thing to mention is that this part is adjustable you can easily pull it out and push it down. This flush valve also consists from two parts. As you can see, you can easily twist and turn the whole top part of the flush valve. As soon as you get these two parts close to each other, you can just keep turning and the top part of the valve gets disattached. Then you can just easily put it back and it's in one piece again. Next thing to mention about this flush valve is that it actually has got two scales on both sides of the valve. One says full and the other one says half. You can actually easily press this grey button and adjust how much water you want to use for each flash. Lower you put this adjustment button, more water is used for each flash. For the full flash I'm going to put the button all the way down. For the half flash I would probably put it somewhere around a middle or maybe a little bit lower and a middle. The last adjustment you can make on this flush valve is this little button which you can press up and down 
and this one actually means that you can adjust how much water of the whole tank is used for flushing lower you go more water is used and the last thing I would like to show you is this nut which obviously you can unscrew there is also a rubber washer and another plastic washer which we will be installing onto the cistern now when you made your adjustments and selected how much water you want to use for the full flesh how much water you want to use for the half flesh and how much water of the whole tank you want to use for flushing you are ready to install this flush valve back into the cistern our second replacement part which is our inlet valve it's got one adjustment we can make as you can see here there is a little blue pin which we can remove turn the bottom of the inlet valve clockwise and then you can adjust the height of the inlet valve what it basically means is that you can choose how much water you want to let go inside the cistern higher you go more water will go into the cistern obviously your cisterns got certain height so you can't go all the way up that's why you may want to have a look at the instructions which basically tell you what are your minimum and maximum adjustment levels after looking at the instructions i made the height of the inlet valve from the bottom underneath the rubber washer to the very top of the inlet valve 285 millimeters which works perfectly with the size of my cistern another important thing to mention about the inlet valve is this water level mark which is basically telling you how much water is going to be in the cistern you will have to measure how high this mark is from the bottom of this rubber washer mine is 19 centimeters this will help you when adjusting the flush valve second thing to mention is the nut at the bottom of the valve and the rubber washer and now we can start with the installation of the flush valve the way the valve goes in the cistern is that this part actually faces the inlet valve which we will install a little bit later so if my inlet valve is going into this corner I'm going to have this part of the flush valve facing that inlet valve not the other way around let's put it in the cistern and fix it with the nut so here you can see it's been installed it can be adjusted later on if needed the second replacement part our inlet valve we'll put it in the corner like this and screw it in as well we have our inlet valve and flush valve installed now you use the wrench and tie up these two nuts once you are done you install the foam washer on the bottom part of the cistern and you can install the cistern back onto the toilet be very careful so you don't damage the cistern or the toilet seat 
make sure it sits perfectly now use the wing nuts and the screws and fix the cistern back As you can remember, our inlet valve was 19 centimeters to the water level mark. Now we need to adjust this flush valve as well. And according to the instructions, this should be 2 centimeters higher than the height of our water level of the inlet valve. I need to adjust this to be 20 one centimeters from the bottom of the cistern and now we can connect back the water supply and open the water tap after that the tanks going to be filling in with the water up until the level we set up with the inlet valve as you can see this is our overflow of the flush valve there is two centimeters between the water level and our overflow level and also as you can see there is no water leak anymore before you install the top buttons it's a good idea to actually test the flushing and make sure that you are happy with the water levels used for each flush when i press the gray button you can see that it's a very quick and economical flush which uses approximately half of the water in the tank when I press the white button the whole tank the whole tank is emptied and it gives me significant amount of water running through the toilet pan if you are not happy with the levels of the flushing and would like to make some adjustments all you need to do is turn the water supply off and turn the flush valve until the point when it disconnects you can see all the water is going to run out you can make your adjustment and then simply put the flush valve back and by pressing until you hear the click you can install the flush valve back and the last thing we need to do we need to install our push buttons as you know we have half flush and full flush we have to make sure that it matches the buttons on the flush valve so what we need to do is we need to adjust these little rods the best way of adjusting these rods to a required size is that we place the cistern lid back on take our measuring tape place it on the flush valve and measure what's the distance between the flush valve and the top of the cistern I can see on my measuring tape that it's exactly 9 centimeters now I can just unscrew this nut and measure 9 centimeters from the bottom of this button and that's where I will trim the rods. It is recommended to leave approximately one millimeter between the end of the rod and the flush button. With our trimming, we don't have to be exact to a millimeter because these buttons, they have actually additional adjustments. By unscrewing these little screws, we can screw in and out okay I have my rods trimmed all I need to do now 
is to remove the cistern lid and fix the button to the cistern lid before I tie this up firmly I want to make sure that my half flesh button reflects the grey half flesh button on the valve and the full flesh reflects the, the white full flesh button. Once we have our button fixed to the lid, all we need to do now is to place the lid back on the cistern and give it the last flush. It's all working perfectly fine and we are done. And that's all guys. I will leave links for all replacement parts in the description. Please give me a like if you enjoy the video and find it helpful. And also please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. See you next time.